Hey guys, Donovan Bankhead here with Fretspot.com. Um, been doing some videos on the new F Base VF5s and uh, was getting some questions about the BN5s, which have been out for a while. Uh, people why, wondering why there's no love for the BN5, so I'm going to take care of that. So uh, the BN5 is a pretty well established model for F Base. Uh, certainly, all F Base fans are familiar with it and love it. Uh, if you're not familiar with it though, this might be something new for you to see. Give you a quick rundown on it. I guarantee you, I'll tell you right now, I'm going to probably leave some things out and probably trip over my words a little bit. So if you think of something I left out, add them in the comments and maybe we'll add it on a future uh, revision of this video. So a couple things about the BN series. The BN stands for bolt-on neck and a bolt-on neck tends to reduce the compression and increase the dynamics and attack as compared to like a neck through construction base. Um, so they tend to be you know probably a little bit brighter and, and respond a little faster. Um, all F bases uh, unless they've been ordered custom to be different have a 34 and a half inch scale and that 34 and a half inch scale helps to make the base a lot easier and more comfortable to play. A lot of bases are generally 34 inch scales um, but you still get a very clear fundamental um, uh, uh, especially on like a low B string and low E strings, you get a very, very nice clear tone on that um, without the rest of the strings being too tight. Um, 34 and a half inch scale is also very helpful when you're playing a six string. Um, a lot of times for six strings, builders will use a 35 inch scale or larger and that can make the C string just too tight and too thin sounding. So 34 and a half inch scale is a very good compromise for that. Another unique thing with F bass is that the neck uh, is set a little further in the body and that increases comfort when you play and uh, it tends to reduce some neck dive um, and it makes it sit on a strap a little bit more comfortable so uh, and there I'm, I'm essentially really just talking about just kinda how it's set back into this body a little bit so um, bridge is moved back to the very pretty much the very edge of it and uh, it allows the base to just to to rest on your shoulders well when using a good strap speaking of straps good wide base straps a good thing to have I personally recommend the Moody leather straps. Uh, her stuff is absolutely amazing, premium quality leather, something you should definitely check out. If you can't find them, let me know, I'll help you find them. I always have a source. So, uh, a couple other things. You know, I think one of the things that's most striking for people when they see a base are the finishes. And I know for me, that was the thing that, that really caught my attention the first time. And you look at these finishes, and they're just kind of like over the top. This is a good example. Uh, one that um, uh, that they that uh, George calls the black and white ceruse or ceruse. Uh, I believe you can pronounce it either way. You know, I'm in Missouri, so we're going to call it ceruse. All right, that's how we say it here. So, um, but basically, what we have is a black base and the grain of the ash body, which is generally what George uses a lot on his bases, um, has a white filler that's been pushed into the grain, and it just it gives it that really striking striking look. My lighting here isn't very good, but um, in person it's back, it's black, and the white is definitely white. It sort of looks green when I'm looking at the camera here right now, but uh, trust me, it's black and white. So, um, anyways, a few other things about uh, F-Base that I think is kind of famous for F-Base at least, uh, and one of those things is the preamp. Now, a lot of builders, of course, use um, active preamps. But generally, they'll have those preamps will be both boost and cut, and uh, that gives you a ton of tonal control. But frankly, a lot of times it's probably too much tonal control. Most of us are using very good amplifiers when we're gigging and playing, uh, and we generally get our tones pretty close on the amp, and we use the bass for the final things. Um, and I hear a lot of guys cut too many frequencies that really, in my opinion, screws up their sound, especially live. With the boost, it keeps it pretty simple. Keeps it very organic, very musical sounding, um, and, it, and it's also defeatable, which is pretty nice. But uh, anyway, I'm, I'm a big fan of that preamp. I think it's very organic, very musical sounding. Speaking of organic, the other thing that kind of sets it apart is the uh, pickups that George uses. These are his own handmade pickups. He doesn't; they're not commercially available. He doesn't, you know, they're not some other company's pickups that he puts in. And uh, he felt like that. Uh, you know, the tone that he heard when he was building his bass is that he wanted to hear. He wanted a really thick, rich sound, uh, something like kind of a good vintage tone with a sweet high end, not like a real harsh or brittle high end, which 
Um, I don't want to name any names, but I typically associate that with certain pickup manufacturers and preamp manufacturers. Um, and as he was experimenting with the pickups and the preamp and, of course, the building of the base, it just kind of gave him, uh, he felt like a better insight into how to best make pickups specifically for this series of bases. So George makes the preamps and the, um, uh, or actually he has the preamps made for him uh, through an associate and then he makes the, the pickups. So I think that's a pretty important thing. A um, couple other things, uh, uh, maple fretboard. You know, George actually prefers a maple fretboard in his bases. Um, you can get them with uh, rosewood and ebony and other things as well. But his preference all around is, is for maple. Um, he thinks that uh, they're a little more bright, a little more alive sounding. Uh, the attack is faster. And when you combine it with an ash body, it gives you just a killer, killer, killer slap tone. So um, ebony's a great one too. Ebony's a little more dense. Um, I love the sound of ebony. And uh, with ebony, you, of course, you'll, have, you'll increase the compression a little bit of the tone, and uh, attacks reduce a little bit, but, you know, probably for most of us, we won't really notice it. So um, I'm a pretty, pretty big fan of maple, so um, I don't have any complaints there. A few little touches, too, that I think are special about F-bases that I want to tell you about. And uh, one, one thing is the, um, the output jack here. Um, where it's located, you know, a lot of times we'll see an output jack down here in the bottom, um, but George moves it up just a little bit so when we're using a strap I keep talking about strap and of course I'm not wearing one but it just seems to wrap a little better right there and hang and be out of the way a little bit so that's kind of a nice touch um, something else the, the matching wood pickup covers I think that's probably a pretty striking feature of F-Base that a lot of people notice um, someone uh, I've gotten questions before asking do they affect the tone at all no they don't they don't affect it so um, they just look awesome. So, you know, really, what more could you want? It looks great, doesn't hurt it, so can't beat that. 